Building large wings that can support themselves can be very challenging. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a wing box. Now, be sure to stick around till the end of this video for a teaser on a big new mock I'm constructing. So, let's get into it. After my last video, I got lots of suggestions on what I should do next, and I liked one out of a lot of the other ones. Now, I will do a lot of the other ones, but I liked this one the most, and it was how to build the structure of a plane, especially a big plane that has swept wings. Now, I thought that was a great idea. I do, I have done this for a lot of my other planes, especially the 747, and obviously I can't show you how to build the 747, that would take hours, if not weeks but I can do it in a smaller scale, and that's what this is. So let's get into it. The design of this is called a wing box. Now, normally, to, but since this is such a small scale, we, can't, we have to connect these, but normally you could have these separate and you can actually remove the wings in order to transport it. Now this one, the whole idea here is to make a structurally sound box, hence this right here, and then spill slot wings into it. And that provides a very strong and, and structurally Ugh, very strong structure for the wings to be able to be supported by and I'm going to show you how to use certain tricks and stuff so that works out for you so let's get into it all right the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a solid base and that's what this plate's going to be this is going to be our solid base that sort of helps us get a foothold on what we're doing the next thing we're going to want is we're going to need quite a few of these we're going to need a lot of them but if in this <laughs> specific step we're going to need six of them and we're going to need this and we're going to just attach this to the bottom here and then stick these in like this and what you're doing during this step is you're trying to build a foundation so I'm going to do the other one now all right once you're able to do that we're going to want to flip it over so it's like this and we're going to use these sort of L brackets, they're Technic pieces, and we're going to need about mm, four of them, that seems about right. And I'm trying to build this real time so you guys can see it, that's always what I do in my tutorials. And what we're gonna wanna do is create a sandwich sort of effect here. So what we're gonna do is bring in some of these and stick them right here. You're gonna want them at the very end. Now. Keep in mind that this isn't like an actual plane that I'm doing, though I will combine it with another plane at the very end of this video, so you can see that. But what I'm doing is showing you how you want to be able to build one of these in a larger scale to be able to achieve a larger plane. So we're going to stack them on top like this, and then we're going to bring in some of these larger ones. Now, these could be any color. I'm doing this in multicolor, so you know what parts are parts, because obviously when I normally do this, it would do it in gray, but in this... I don't know, sometimes I do it in multicolor since it would be hidden, but that's what we're going to want to do. And, eh, just hit a, hit a lamp there. Now what we're going to want to do is just going to want to sort of line them up here. And as you can see, I'm missing a peg right there. So I eh, want to attach it like this. And you're going to want to line it up like this. And we're going to line that hole up to there. And just a helpful hint here, if you're going to be attaching them using these, you're going to want a Technic brick two plates and then technic brick or else it won't line up so we're going to bring in two more of these we're going to stick them in here like that and that'll allow us to attach them like that we're going to do that both sides here like so our next step is going to involve some tiles you can see we're going to need a two by two tile here and two one by two tiles. What you're going to want to do is place the one by two tiles here and just a hint for a larger scale model you would probably need more of, them, more of them but for this one we're just going to place them in a pattern like this and then we're going to want to bring in a plate here this is going to be a one by four it can really be any plate but this is what I had most readily available. Place it right there and then take two of these cheese slopes that's what I call them so they're called in a lot of places just place them right here and you'll see what that's for in a minute here so we're going to want to place them there. Our next step is going to involve four of these. Now you're going to want to put these right here. As I said earlier, you always want to have two plates between a Technic brick and another Technic brick when you're using Technic beams to sandwich it in there. And you might be able to start to see what we're doing here. So we're just going to want to place four of them in like this. 
like so. And then you're gonna wanna bring in one of these. These are eights, you can really use any size, whatever fits you best. And you'll notice that it starts lining up on this side. And so we're going to want to do that again on the other side. So let me do that now. All right, once you've gotten that one in, you're gonna have to take this off. I guess I wasn't thinking very far ahead, but you can just watch because if you were actually paying attention, you may have noticed this. You're gonna insert another peg right there so you can have structural support up here. And after you insert the peg, it's, it can be a bit challenging to get these back in there because they never seem to want to line up here. Let me skip ahead that for you. All right, after a lot of struggling, I finally got these two on and they sort of brace it in there. Now, before I forget to say this, you're gonna wanna bring in another peg right here, oh, like that on this side. And you're gonna probably wanna bring in another one on this side, but it appears that I have lost it. So let me go get that. Yeah, so you're gonna wanna insert that right here, like so, and bring in a couple more of these. And yeah, this is quite a pain, but you just have to sort of wiggle it in there and eventually it'll fit. Now, if it's easier for you, you can actually take out one of the middle pegs like this, and that should make it easier to attach this. So if you're having trouble, that's a good hint, helpful tip there. And we get sort of a cage here. Now this is very important to building a wing box when you do this, because this actually, sorry, I'm shaking my table here, this actually creates a sort of a cage or a structural place for you. So you're gonna wanna put some plates on top. I'm just doing this so you can build on top course don't have to do this and our next thing is going to be building the wing spars so let's get to, into that now whether this is a small scale or a large scale you're always going to want to start off with some of these and the reason why is because these are always the best is they have the technicals in them and you can connect them using the technic pins and you can create a larger and larger wing spar which can support more weight on a plane so always keep that in mind and how we're going to connect these is I know on a smaller scale like this this is a little, little bit cheating, I, don't, I know, but on a larger one, you would use better one, better technique, but I'm using an L bracket like this. I'm attaching one end of it to this, and this is only to connect it in this place. Normally on a larger one, you would use a bit better of a technique, but you're gonna attach it like this, and that's gonna be your, your spar. Now we're going for a, a, more of a sweat back design than you normally would, but this is only to get a Thing that's going to fit in our wing box. All right, actually fitting it in the wing box can be a little tricky, and this is true for larger models. You're going to want to stick it in there like this and push back like that. Eventually that should sit in there like this. And then once you're satisfied with where it is, you can reattach your, um, your brackets here on the side. And I'm going to go over how a stresses of a plane can affect the inside of a plane because I have had a lot of experience with large planes like my 747. I spent months trying to figure this out because it just kept warping and snapping and all sorts of stuff. So once you get to this point, you end up with something like this. And one thing you may notice is that it likes to slide a little bit, it sort of wiggles. Now, normally you would have a wing sort of snug up against this and you would be fine. But just in this case, we're going to take some of these and some of these. We're going to try to jam it in like right down in there. Or, hmm. Let me cut to that. All right, and after that, we are done. Now this is just a small scale example of what you would probably do in a larger scale. I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen of what my 747s looks like, or I might actually use this as a thumbnail, but just picture this as a mini one. And I'm gonna bring in our wing from the last time, the last show. <laughs> and we're gonna try to a little beat up I had to modify it a little bit now this isn't perfect obviously you would try to do a little bit of molding up here but we're just going to ignore that for now we're just going to attach it straight in there like this and just imagine there's two of these and it's in one color and we're going to have some more wing right here you would normally have to shape it I originally built this wing for a straight wing plane but as you can see it can hold it up quite well you do get a bit of a dehirial with it as well so that's pretty cool and our little flap here yeah, so that's how you build a wing box. I promised you a bit of a sneak peek, and here it is. I'm just gonna show you a brief minute of this, and this video should be posted sometime around midweek, so stay tuned.